Hello, 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 my friends, and welcome to a presentation about the area of a rhombus. And you might have just come fresh from a presentation or a review on the parts of the rhombus. That's going to come in very handy. Uh, also, we need a rhombus. Ah, rhombus. Rhombuses are pretty cool. It's like a square that got knocked over a little bit. All the sides are equal. All the sides add up to a perimeter. And then, you know, with these vertices, we can create some other useful parts as well, like the minor diagonal. It's that shorter of the two diagonals. Uh, wait, I want to show you another one too. The major diagonal, but I'll need a different rhombus for that. How about this one? There's that major diagonal. You know, it's going to be sort of hard to label them because um, there's not a lot of space here. Well, I want to show you something really cool. You ready for it? Did you see that? That rhombus just changed into a rectangle. But how? What exactly happened here? I mean, it looked pretty cool, but let's see if we could do it again. Check it out. Hmm. Where exactly did we just cut this thing? We sort of cut it along the minor diagonal. We bisected the major diagonal. And then as we carried that piece over, there's that minor diagonal following over to become the base. Hmm. Then we cut along the major diagonal on this side to bisect those two pieces and create this. So our major diagonal was cut in half. So the major diagonal cut in half is the height the minor diagonal is the base. Oh, I've just got to show you that one more time. Okay, here it is again. Here is us bisecting this rhombus by the minor diagonal and then bisecting the remaining piece by the major diagonal, cutting it in half. And now that we have a rectangle, we can bring out that good old area equals base times height. But that wouldn't work on our original rhombus. We're going to use the parts we have here. And the base isn't really the base anymore. It's the minor diagonal. And the height really isn't the height anymore. It's the major diagonal divided by two. How cool is that? So we could use minor diagonal times the major diagonal divided by two to find the area of a rhombus. But, um, you know, I've got another way that might work as well. But for that, I need another rhombus. Where is it? Oh, oh, hold on a second. There it is. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. All right, let's, uh, Let's get this out of here for just a moment and take a look at another configuration that we can do. Okay, take a close look. I'm going to change this rhombus into a rectangle. Lo and behold, a rectangle. And there's our base and our height. But where did they come from? Watch again as I set this back up. Let's take a look at what we did this time. Last time we bisected those diagonals, and this time I think we're doing the same thing. Here's the major diagonal, and that's going to follow us over to become our base. Now I'm going to cut along the minor diagonal to bisect the remaining pieces. So the diagonal is being cut in half, that poor minor diagonal. It's okay. Check it out. Now we can use area equals base times height since we see that rectangle. 
But again, our base isn't really just a base, it's a major diagonal, and our height is the minor diagonal divided in half. We bisected it. We cut it in two. So we could use area equals major diagonal divided by two times minor diagonal, or we could swap those out. Or, I have a better idea. What if we just cut out the middle multiplication symbol and area equals our major diagonal times our minor diagonal divided by two? Well, what are you waiting for? Go find a rhombus and try it. Oh, wait, didn't you make a rhombus diagram just now? Go find the area of that rhombus, friend. I can't wait to find out.